Now we're going to look at some of the benefits of a uh, software product line, and you'll see that not only are there the typical kinds of organizational benefits of uh, faster time to market and increased predictability of delivery and so on, but there are also um, individual benefits associated with uh, product lines as well. So this is a, a list that we've seen before, or similar to what we've seen before. The kinds of goals that people are going after with a product line approach. Productivity gains, improved time to market, market agility, mass customization, getting control of diverse product configurations. That's typically one of the reasons why organizations get into this in the first place, in addition to things like um, faster time to market. But you know, we have a number of products in the marketplace. We always seem to build each one from scratch. There's an obvious amount of commonality across these. Why can't we impose some discipline in how we create these? And why can't we adopt a reuse-focused approach to this set of products? And that typically drives people, first of all, towards a common architecture and components. And then, ultimately, if they take the next step, and some choose not to, but if they can really make a business case for it, they can go after a full-blown uh, product line approach. Some more examples, uh, back to our printers again. Hewlett-Packard actually have a product line approach to the firmware of printer controllers. They uh, came to uh, one of our early product line conferences and talked about their uh, Owen project, Owen named after Robert Owen, the father of the cooperative movement in England. And so they treated this as a cooperative venture with people from across the organization coming together to create this reuse-based approach to uh, printer firmware. Motorola also way back had this uh, Flexworks project, a family of uh, one-way pagers. So the, uh, they were one of the, uh, the pioneers, and they probably didn't treat it as what we would now call a software product line, but they recognized the opportunity for sharing of resources across the development organization involved in this. Uh, Bosch, another of our customers, has a product line of um, gasoline engine system controllers. Um, their case is interesting in that they found that not only were they successful at addressing their particular market segments, which tended more towards the, the high-end domains, but they also recognized the need to do a, um, a re-architecting of their system to go after some of the emerging markets in Eastern Europe and Asia. And we have found this with other customers where you create a set of feature-rich products to go after the high-end customers because they're more profitable and they will pay for these additional features. And you design your architecture and your components accordingly. But then when it comes time to go after the low-end market, if you haven't anticipated future demand in the low-end market arena, it may be difficult to break your high-end system apart to go after the low-end market with a reduced set of capabilities and a reduced number of components to build those capabilities. So again, this is why you need to think of this in terms of a business proposition. It's not just about the architecture and the cool features that you can build into the components. It's really about being proactive about why you need to go after a market with this particular set of products and how you anticipate that market evolving over time. And the assumption is that in your organizations, or at least in commercial organizations, there are people already in the organization devoted to doing that kinds of thing, making technology predictions and making uh, market forecasts. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, competing against the wall. The wall, quarter cable. And yeah. Uh, LSI Logic uh, is another organization that has adopted a product line approach for the firmware in disk control. 
RAID is a redundant array of independent disks. And these are some examples from, um, I think Bosch is in our Hall of Fame, and the others are in our catalog. So we have this thing that we call the Hall of Fame, which we started off as a uh, kind of a, a fun way to end our product lines conference. And it has grown to the point where organizations are now um, using the fact that they're in the SEI Hall of Fame as part of their marketing literature. So we've had to get a bit more serious about how we get people to propose candidates and how they justify candidates for inclusion in the Product Line Hall of Fame. The uh, Product Line catalog is a longer list of Product Line success stories that we know of, ones that we weren't necessarily directly involved in, but that people have told us about um, when they come to our Product Line conferences and Celsius workshops. Tech information in the Pardon? Is the Celsius Tech information in the catalog? Celsius Tech is in there, yeah. In fact, Celsius Tech is also, the, the case study for Celsius Tech is in the Software Architecture uh, Principles and Practices book, and it's available as a uh, technical report from the SEI website. So the kinds of organizational benefits that the success stories have seen are numbers like this. A tenfold increase in productivity. A tenfold reduction in product defects. So these are pretty big numbers. I'm not saying that, for example, if you go after a software product line that you'll reduce your time to market by 98%. But organizations have achieved these kinds of numbers. And in fact, what I have noticed when we do our uh, product line technical probes and follow up with organizations later, they start out with relatively modest goals for what they can achieve with an architecture and a set of components. And when they build on that to create a product line, they can achieve way beyond their initial expectations for quality or time to market improvements or whatever it is to get numbers like these. Yeah.